between us. But yet we gather and we are held together in love and in care as we gather and worship, whether from here, which are very few, only the skeleton crew are here the, today, and, um, and yet we have so many people who will be viewing and participating in worship. I'd like to wish you all a very uh, happy new year, and uh, it's uh, the new year's coming in sort of like snake and ladders, that game that uh, we start off and we think we're making progress, and then this our friend, Mr. or Mrs. or Miss or whatever, COVID, decides to change things for us. So we are a resilient group of people, and certainly uh, that we know, and we will um, lean into the new policies and the new way of which we work and uh, as the new year continues. And our hope is that as this year continues, that the, uh, um, the COVID virus will also slowly go away but until then we will worship and we will celebrate our faith together in the wonderful and new ways uh, I'd like to thank Carol Pippi for filling or for uh, leading worship last week it was good to see Carol um, I was at home of course and listening to the worship service so uh, Carol and I go back a very long way uh, so it was good to good to see Carol sharing with you last week uh, it's uh, thank you to our audiovisual people who uh, are part of the skeleton crew who are here and our readers and certainly our music team. So thank you for being here and, uh, and participating today. Just want to call your attention to a few of the announcements. Um, the, uh, of course, as you know, in uh, the... Uh, um, in church services, face to face, where that's going to be postponed until a little later on. So hopefully, hopefully at the end of the month, we'll begin to move back into person-to-person uh, uh, -person worship, so we can gather back here again. So, but please stay tuned uh, to our Facebook and uh, to our uh, website as well, and uh, more information is there as we go along. And because we are uh, not being able to meet together, I know there were some uh, concerns around giving some whatnot, folks wondering, well, th we do have e-transfer. So if uh, that's something that would be helpful to you, uh, then we do have e-transfer. And that's on our website as well. So you can note that if you want to give, even in your absence. Also, fun script. Uh, today is your the last day you can order. And... Uh, uh, Janet is the person you need to be in contact with, and I think there's a regular group of people who participate in that program. So if you want to order, today is the last day, and the next order will be January 23rd. And again, e-transfers are accepted as well. Our usual official board meeting that was scheduled for January 20th, that's been canceled for now. And our annual meeting that was scheduled um, for... Uh, um, I don't have that in here. Pardon? The 30th? The 30th? Yeah, so it was the 30th at 1, uh, or the 30th, and uh, it's been delayed as well. And again, just keep, uh, just note your, uh, the Facebook and the, uh, certainly our website for more information on that. But having said that, we uh, still need reports and whatnot, and if you can have those in by uh, January 12th, that will be really helpful for us as we prepare the, the, uh, the docket. Uh, I think that's about all that we have. Again, I would, hold, uh, would suggest that you pay attention to our website and Facebook, and we'll update you on the different developments and whatnot. What's most important, and I know this is annoying when we, when we have to go back to... Um, Facebook Live and whatnot as a primary way of worship. But you know what? Most, what's most important, important is the care and that people are safe. And so, you know, if this is going to make people safe, then this is what we do. And uh, we'll continue on and, and uh, we, will, uh, we, will, we will persevere. And uh, so... Those are the announcements. I, uh, you know, I should have gone back and looked uh, to see if there were any birthdays and whatnot. I, I know there's some birthdays out there. 
I don't know if there's any, there's very few people. Do you know of any birthdays or any special events? Oh, oh, oh. On the 13th, I think it is. Okay, and Melvin Ling has a birthday as well, my gosh. Well, thank you for reminding me about Ellen. <laughs> Could have been a lot of trouble. <laughs> so, happy birthday uh, to those folks and any others who are celebrating special times in their lives. Uh, uh, happy birthday, uh, happy anniversary, or whatever that event is for you. Many, many years ago, there was a person who was pretty dynamic and pretty controversial to the point that people sort of perked up a little bit. And then there were people who followed him, and then there were more who followed him, and then they wondered who this person was. And then one day they went to him and they asked him, they said, who are you? Who are you? And in just a very few words, without explanation, without a great amount of fanfare, he just said, I am the light. Imagine the light of the world. Let's take a moment to quiet ourselves as we contemplate and as we allow that light to soak into our lives and our awareness become very, very keen of the presence of God with us. Oh, a song must rise. Please join with me in the call to worship. Come and let us listen for the voice of God. We hear God's voice in the water. Water is cleansing and refreshing. Water reminds us of our connectedness to Christ. Baptism clears away for new life. Baptism is a reminder that we are God's people who are joined with all creation. So let us come then and worship the God of new life and of new beginnings. Our opening hymn this morning is Come In, Come In and Sit Down. And it's kind of ironic that it's, we're not coming in, coming in here to sit down, but we're coming and sitting down wherever uh, those holy places where we gather this day.
please join with me in the, in the uh, prayer of approach? From the formless water, God created life and called it good. Water, the river of Jordan, John baptized Jesus, the source of living. Christ invites all who are thirsty to come and drink. Baptism with water is a symbol of our life with and in Christ. It reminds us that we are welcome that we it reminds us that we are to welcome all to the wa to the living water. As we gather today, we invite it once again to prepare our hearts and minds to drink the living water. And with Jesus we share in this ancient prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And we will now have the reading of our psalm, which is Psalm 29. Ascribe to God, you powers of the heaven. Ascribe to God all glory and strength. Ascribe due honor to God's holy name and worship in the beauty of holiness. God's voice is over the waters. God's glory thundering across the great water. God's voice is power. God's voice is full of majesty. God's voice shatters the cedars, splinters the cedars of Lebanon. God's voice makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Mount Hermon stampede like a wild young bull. God's voice forks into tongues of fire. God's voice shakes the wilderness, sets trembling the wilderness of Kadesh. God's voice causes the oaks to whirl, stripping the forest bare, and in the temple all cry glory. Glory, glory, glory to our God. God sits enthroned above the waters. God is enthroned as sovereign forever. You give strength to your people, O God. Now give up you people the blessing of peace. Glory, glory, glory to our God. Our next hymn is um, Draw the Circle Wide. And uh, we'll sing verses 1 and 2, uh, and then I'll have a, a story time for both young and old and everybody in between. Uh, and then we'll conclude uh, that portion of our worship with uh, the last verse of Draw the Circle Wide. So we'll sing verses 1 and 2. Oh, 
Notice I'm learning. I'm not going to try to straddle it. I will sit around. It never works well with the gown when you uh, try to do that. So, my good friends, both here and beyond, I, uh, I brought something here today which is, you probably won't recognize this because I've sort of had to blow it up a little bit. But what it is, well, I'll ask you, it's one of those things that you put on your luggage uh, when you're traveling. Does anybody here know what you put on your luggage when you're traveling? Name tag, luggage tag, right? And a luggage tag is basically to let people know that this piece of luggage is owned by me. So that when you go to the conveyor carousel, you'll go and you'll look for the little tag and you're not trucking off with someone else's suitcase. Having said that, I've taken other people's suitcase and gotten home and realized I didn't have the right suitcase. <laughs> so I drew, drew this up. I was, I was looking at different um, tags and I, I had to draw this one up because it was, it was interesting. So yeah, so on the tag it says your name, your phone number, your email, your city and whatnot. So just to let people know who owns this luggage. Now, on a, on a um, luggage tag that I saw that it had this information, but on the other side it said, I'm not yours. <laughs> that might have been good for the suitcase I took home. That wasn't mine. I'm not yours. So, anyway, so I begin to, begin to think about that. And today, ba being bapti uh, baptism of Jesus Sunday, or baptism of our Lord, I began to think about that a little bit, about luggage tags and about our own lives. And uh, we have a name, we have a phone number usually, usually we have an email address, and we have a place where we live usually. And that's who we are. And uh, sometimes we think we, we, we own ourselves. And yet... In our reading, we're going to share a little later in the gospel, we hear a story about Jesus being baptized, and all of a sudden, the voice from heaven says, you are mine. You are loved. You are cared for. You are mine. And so when I started to think about that, and about name tags, I thought, mm, okay, the name tag says, I'm not yours. I'm not yours. And yet in baptism, and if we think of ourselves as luggage, in baptism, it says, I'm going to bring a pin, I am yours. I'm yours. And that's, I think, when we think about baptism, Usually we think about babies being baptized, we think about all those sorts of things, and it's sort of a very special time when family gathers, but in the United Church, we baptize babies, we baptize adults, we, bat we don't always use a font either, some people want total immersion, so we go to a pool or lake or something and totally baptize, and we do all of those things. But no matter how we do it, it doesn't take away the fact that no matter who we are, baptized or not, God says, you're mine. You're mine. And I think no matter where we are in life, no matter who we are, God's love is so huge, so magnificent, so real, so present. It says... And it's just reminded when we have a baptism, reminds us that God says to each of us, you are mine. I love you. You are special. You are somebody. And I think sometimes, I don't think of myself too great sometimes. Oh, I'm not great. I'm, yeah, yeah. I think pretty badly about myself. And yet I'm reminded that I might think all those things, but God says, eh, you're crazy. You're pretty awesome, Greg. 
And the same thing God says to each and every one of us. And again, I say baptized or otherwise. God says to you, you are special. You are somebody. I love you. You are mine. And may that be a song that we keep close to our hearts. And maybe that's a mantra that we can say to ourselves. What God said to Jesus. And in turn, God says to all of us, you are mine. Oh my gosh, you take me out of the pulpit for a week and then I forget things. I forgot to have a little prayer after our time with the, after my story time. But anyway, that's fine. I hope you'll forgive me for that. <laughs> and I'm going to invite you to come and share with me in the prayer of confession. And again, as I've said so many times, and I feel like a broken record, but oftentimes I feel, you know, we can say th but some things uh, are never said enough. And sometimes we look at the prayer of confession as something that really says, I am a rotten, nasty, evil person that continually needs to be forgiven. And I like to think of it in another way. If it's just a reminder that in our love and in our caring and as human beings, you know what? We do things. We say things that hurts people and hurts God as well. It's just a way of reminding us, of course, that we are human, and yet what God sees in us is the best. And it's a way of reminding us that the best is here, and we need to emphasize that. And so reminding ourselves that we do fall short of uh, being the best who we are and the best that God calls us to be. Uh, it's a way of reminding us of God's love that continually calls us forward uh, in love and in care. So join with me in the prayer of confession. Each of us are deeply loved by God, but it is so very hard to live that kind of love. We do try, but often we fail to share unconditionally love of all. In the gift of water, the ritual of baptism, God reminds us that we can begin anew. Even if we totally muck up, we know that God sets us before the right path. God knows and loves us. We are God's beloved. So let's take a moment to allow God's unconditional love to cradle us and love us into new beings. The voice of God publicly claims Jesus as my child, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. May we too hear such a claim upon our lives as God's children, as God's beloved. In the season of Epiphany, God's gift to us in Christ is revealed to the world. Our gifts to God reveal our commitment to sharing unconditional love and mercy, forgiveness and hope that we have received with all whom we meet. 
Our gifts proclaim that we are God's beloved and God is our beloved. We give as we are able. We give as we are called. Although, again, we, are our, we have no offering plates per se this morning, and, and, uh, but we do offer the many gifts uh, that we present both in, uh, in many, many ways. Uh, and I'd invite you to, uh, um, to share in the offertory prayer with me. El Shaddai, Yahweh, Jehovah, Adonai. Your name is music and meaning. You have named us as well. And our names not only identify us, but hold the key to our true identities. Hold us to be worthy of the name you have given us. Beloved, Christ followers, God's children. May our small gifts do your work of love and care throughout our worldwide community. Amen. And at this time we'll have the reading of scripture and it's from... Isaiah. Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 7. But now thus says the Lord, He created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. But when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Let us continue to listen for that voice that comes to us in so many ways, and may it come to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from Luke chapter 3, 15 to 17, and concluding with verses 21 and 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water. But the one who is more powerful than I is coming, and I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His widowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized... And when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice, and a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. May these words and the words of Scripture resonate within our lives this day. And may we know the presence of God and ourselves in that relationship as beloved 
as a child of the living God. Amen. too hard I'm feeling tired and I'm feeling older from walking a mile just to get a yard but it's alright I know where I'm going it's alright I know the way yes it's alright I know where I'm headed and there's just one thing that I need to say take me down to the river and drink from the Me down to the river and drink from the water, down to the river to see my Lord. All this worry doesn't make me happy, and all this hustle doesn't make me strong. All this hurry doesn't make me see the world. Beauty where I belong, but it's alright. I feel the wind changing, it's alright. And there's a song in the air, yes, it's alright. I'm standing here singing, and I know this music's gonna take me there, take me down to the river. was just presented is um, those folk are local folk uh, from Nova Scotia and uh, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, uh, and they are the team leaders of the music at uh, Youth Forum. And uh, they make magnificent, beautiful music, and uh, the energy at Youth Forum is just such a wonderful experience. And um, for our youth, uh, out there, if that's something you'd like to do, uh, once this COVID thing is passed, uh, we'll be back to sharing together at Youth Forum, and once a year, uh, youth are invited to come and share in that time and meet with people all across the Maritime. So, uh, so that's just a little taste of the wonderful gifted group that uh, pr provide leadership uh, at Youth Forum conference. Let us take a moment of prayer. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our hope and our salvation. Amen. Well, it seemed like Christmas would never, ever come. I was waiting and waiting, and we were preparing, of course, through Advent, and now it's all over. It's all over. It's done. My grandparents used to tell me that time moves faster when you get older. And I thought, of course time cannot move faster when you get older. Time is a constant. Well, I don't know anymore. Because as I get older, it seems like time is running away too quickly. This Christmas, I was struck how quickly time has gone by. We were fortunate, of course, to have both our children and their partners to share Christmas with us. And it struck me, and this might seem odd, but it struck me that, my gosh, they're all grown up. They are all grown up. They're making their lives. They're out doing things, and they have partners, and they're, they're all grown up. You might think, well, Greg, come on, get with life. Where have, you, have you been sleeping for the last 30 years? You know, Of course they're growing up. 
But I acknowledge that with some grief as I ask myself, where has the time gone? It seems like yesterday that I was hanging out with Ellen in the birthing room and watching these two little fellows come into the world. This morning, as we move from Christmas to Epiphany, I'm left with the same type of feeling. Where has the time gone? So let me explain that a little bit, put it in context. Not too long ago, a few weeks ago, we were gazing into a manger at a little baby in swaddling clothes. And then we were whisked past the, the, the toddler, an array of gift-bearing magi, a young family fleeting to Egypt, a 12-year-old boy in the temple, and a mother who's pondering all these things in her heart. Thirty years has gone by in a couple of liturgical weeks and events. And now, today, right after Christmas, right after the birth, we are standing with Jesus, the young adult, probably in his 30s. So do you get what I'm saying? It's a big jump from baby to 30-year-old. Where has the time gone? This morning, we're standing in line with a group of people whom John the Baptist calls, not in our reading today, but in other areas, a din of vipers. Really not an endearing name, I don't think. I think if I were in a congregation and the old minister said, you're a din of vipers, I'd be a little put out. But deep in the muddy waters of the Jordan, John the Baptist is bellowing all uh, that all should repent, that all should come to the waters of baptism and repent. And lo and behold, look who's hanging out with this motley group, Jesus himself, with the din of vipers. Here is this child of God waiting in line to be baptized by John. If I remember correctly, John connects baptism with sin, the remission of sin. Those with sin come and be baptized. So what's a child of God doing in a place like this? What's going on? Well, according to the Christian theologian, John Dominic Crosman, Jesus' baptism was an acute embarrassment for the early church, because the early church wanted, because that idea of Jesus being a, a triumphant my, uh, Messiah image that the church wanted to portray was coming apart. Why would the presumed sinless child of God need a baptism of repentance? Now, I think that's a good question, don't you? That's a, you know, I mean, it seems kind of a funny thing to do. Unbelievable as it seems, Jesus' first public act is an act of humble joining with. His first step is a step toward us. It's a step that challenges our minds and challenges the church. Why would Jesus, why would God have anything to do with us? Because we've been told over and over that we are sinful, we are vipers, we are all these things. So at the hand of another, at the hands of John the Baptist, Jesus decides, indicating that his power lies in his capacity to surrender and let go, to share and to submit, he's baptized. The Jordan River, where once upon a time Jesus' forebearers, the ancient Israelites, entered the land of Cana. The Jordan River, where the prophet Elisha ended his prophetic ministry and his successor Elisha inaugurated his. The Jordan, which flowed under the same sky God opened in the beginning at the dawn of creation. Here, in this river, seeped with history, Jesus is baptized. 
Here in the muddied waters and the crowded wilderness, Jesus shows the connectedness with all creation. As one commentator says, to embrace Jesus' baptism story is to embrace the core truth that we are united, interdependent, connected to one another. And I think that's a relevant topic for our world today because it seems as if we are coming apart and feeling we don't need to be connected, that we are our own persons, our own nations, And great is best. Might is right. In the example of Jesus' baptism, we are all kin. Kin. We are all related. We are responsible for each other in ways that we fail so often to honor. We are called into radical solidarity, not radical separateness. And in baptism, we are freed up, maybe even given permission to touch, to embrace, and to love all that is broken within us and around us precisely because we're always and already God's beloved. You see, we begin at that point of our relationship. Not that I need to earn someone's love or God's love. We start with the premise, I am loved. And I move forward with that. And my life, if I believe that and truly believe that, then my life is oriented in a different way than thinking that I need to gain someone's love. That I need to do something to have people accept me. With the love in which we see at Jesus' baptism and the love understood by God as we begin from the premise that we are loved. We are special. We are God's, God's own. We're loved, beloved, not because we've done every, anything to earn it, but because God's very nature, God's very inclination and desire is to love and to birth that kind of unconditional love in each and every one of us. And baptism is not some type of magical event. I've heard wonderful stories about having children baptized in particular saying, well, it's going to protect them from all evils and this sort of stuff. Or, you know, baptism, then, you know, if they die, then, you know, they're going to go to heaven or whatever. And those stories really speak about thinking of God as a magician, of being magic or something, I think. Baptism is all about stepping in, about finding the holy in the course of the ordinary, the mundane, within the kingdom. And I note that again, that I don't use kingdom, but in the kingdom of God. You see, we good folk, religious folk, try our darndest to keep Jesus safe, to keep God protected. And yet the very one that we try to protect comes to us in strange, mind-bending ways. I believe it is our task not to protect God in any way, but to cling to the possibility that God will surprise us in many different ways and many different guises. We are called, I believe, to stand in the dirty, mucky water with people we would rather not stand next to, skin to skin, fates knitted together. Because holiness... Because true relationship, because the idea of love is in the spaces we will create together in respect and in love for all humankind. Epiphany, which means revelation or appearing or breaking open, 
is pretty deep water. And the epiphanies or the breaking opens and the revelations that we find in our lives and in our faith is surprising to us and sometimes offensive. Who would have ever thought that Jesus, the child of God, would be standing with a din of vipers waiting to be baptized? And we look at that and we go, oh my gosh. The early church said, oh, what's going on here? Doesn't fit in our idea of God. So those surprises, those revelations that sometimes stir us, it's pretty deep water. It's pretty deep water. And yet the call to us is to dare to step out into the waters and to be baptized. Epiphany is not the place where we dip our toe and think, oh, I'll just try this. Epiphany is a place where we take a deep breath and we plunge in head first. There's no little things around this. Baptism promises us new life, but it also has that effect that it drowns before it resurrects. We have to let go before we can hold on. We look toward a new year, 2022. Where do we find hope? Because I don't think I'm exaggerating. There's times when it's, pretty, it's a pretty difficult time in our history of trying to pull out hope and trying to feel that hope. Oftentimes when we look at the news or when we listen to the conversations, it's just sort of dragging us down. It's this hopelessness. And yet I think we are called to find hope. And from our story this morning, Jesus is the one who stands in line with you and me at the water's edge. Jesus is the one who stands in line with those who are waiting to get their COVID shot. Jesus is the one who stands in line with those who are waiting to get into the food bank. Jesus is the one who stands with the homeless person on the streets of Charlottetown or elsewhere waiting. Jesus is the one who stands with the, with the youth who is sofa surfing Jesus is the one who stands with those who grieve and who've lost loved ones. Jesus is willing to immerse himself in our shame, in scandal, in repentance, in pain, in controversy. Willing to be there. All this so that we might hear that we might hear the voice that tells us, and not only tells us, but assures us in this sacred season that we are God's beloved. Not perfect. We don't have our act together, but we are God's beloved. That's where we begin our life and our relationship, in a place of love. That we are God's children, God's own. Even the deepest, darkest waters, we are not alone because we live in God's kingdom. Because you and I are connected. We are kin. The great, crazy thing about all this is we did nothing to earn it. We didn't buy it. It's just the way that God works. Just the way that God works. Hard to get our minds around that because sometimes we find it pretty darn hard to love ourselves, let alone another person. I think God's approach is awesome. It's amazing. And I think one which challenges us to the core to be the people that God calls us to be. May it be so for each and every one of us this day as we journey into 2022 and may the hope and the presence of God sustain us and sustain the world in which we live. 
so let it be. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. O God of time and eternity, as this new year stretches before us, we thank you for the time you give us and for all those things that are still possible and precious in this gift. We thank you for each new day and all its possibilities that lie before us, for each night, its rest and reflection. We thank you for words of forgiveness and the chance to make new, a new start, for words of invitation to explore new possibilities and opportunities. Give us the courage to try something new and the conviction to finish things left over from last year. Make time spent this year your time, O oh God. Bless our time with you, O oh God. God of moments and memories, we remember before you people facing hard times in the months ahead. We pray for those who are struggling with illness and for those facing treatment or surgery with uncertain results. You stand with us, O oh God. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of dear ones and for all who remember what used to be, but can no longer be. You stand with us, O oh God. God of hopefulness and helpfulness, we remember, we remember those who are seeking new opportunities in this new year, those training for new employments and those working, looking for work those developing new businesses and seeking the right employees. We pray also for the farmers, the potato farmers in particular, who at this time are stressed and challenged by the challenges of the market and by the politics of the market. And those, O oh God, who provide services to improve life in our communities amid the uncertainties around us. You stand with us, O oh God. Give us wisdom and perseverance in what we understand as congregation and community of faith in the, in the face of all the challenges of our community and our world. As we work together with the vision of your kingdom, king, kingdom before us this year, fill us with love and generosity that can change the world because of your blessing and our response, because of our reality of your love as our starting point and your acceptance as our beginning. We pray we can make a difference in even the most challenging situations because we are the people of your beloved child. We are a people of the water. We are a people whom you unconditionally love and call us to go forth in your world as your people sharing your love. We ask it in the name of the Risen One. Amen. Our concluding hymn is River Running in You and Me.
Let us depart, beloved of God, showered in abundant blessings, seeking the reflection of Christ in, in all we meet, and being a reflection of Christ in all we greet. Go forth into this new year with an aim to love and an aim to be loved. Go forth to share the love of Christ this day and always.